everybody. I'm going to keep it fairly light and just showing you some pretty cool features and uh, just how you build reports without getting too into the nitty gritty. Uh, and so I figured I'd start with the history of reports from EIS to uh, data warehouses all the way to online analytical processing. Uh, and so we're going to go over this starting from 1970 to about today. And I figured this would wake you up. Does that sound good? I'm not actually going to do that. Uh, I say this just to build a bit of a narrative here that I want you to hopefully see threaded throughout this entire presentation. The idea being that in the past, reports were something very different from what they are today. They were very difficult to make. They took literal warehouses of data. Uh, if you wanted a report, you'd probably have to hire a very expensive analyst, many engineers, and probably book a weekend of computer crunching time in order to build and query data, right? Once you got them, they were static, they were offline, and doing cross-department reports was nearly impossible. This is the past, this is how it used to be. Doesn't sound that great because it's not that great, and it's improved significantly since then to the present, where we have things like drag and drop builders, data in the cloud, we have analysis on demand, so you don't have to book a weekend, you don't have to book computers after 5 p.m. once you leave the office to build these reports. You can do it instantly. You don't have to hire a very expensive analyst to build these reports. Certainly, it requires an analyst with some specialties and knowledge in order to derive some intelligence and actions from these reports, but just to build them and just to get them done and just to mess around and put something together and try to gain some insights instantly, anyone can do that now. So I want to jump in reports and show you how that works within uh, analytics. So analytics. So here we are in the Explorer. There's really three primary parts to Zoho Analytics, right? You have tables of data, you have charts, and you have dashboards. When you build charts, these reports, you put them in dashboards. And you can share these dashboards with different uh, users. You can even share them out with customers, put them on a website. And I'm going to show you how the drag and drop builder works here. So I've, if I hit create, and I say chart view, you see I can make a bunch of different views here. We're going to stick to charts. Those are kind of the most instantly visually compelling. And we choose a base table. So in the case of this account, this account's hooked up to Zoho One, this analytics account. So all the data is kind of meshed together. It'll give me the option to access a bunch of these. So even when I select a base table, that table's being connected to all sorts of different tables from all sorts of different apps within our Zoho One account. So this part doesn't matter too much, but just to make things a little bit simpler, I am going to base it on the leads table. And here you can see all the different data sources we have over here. So you see things like CRM, Zoho Books, Zoho Desk. All of those are different apps, but their data is being blended together using Zoho Analytics. So I want to make a funnel today, and I want to make a funnel that shows us information from all of our leads. So we want to break down all of our leads from leads without any deals, potentials associated with them, with closed one deals associated, invoices, and then paid invoices. So I want to take everyone in my CRM and say, okay, everyone in here, how many of them are involved in a current deal? How many of them have been invoiced? And then how many of them have actually paid? So that means I need to add data columns to this interface here. And because I'm making a funnel, all that data is going to exist on the y-axis, right? We're building it vertically. None is on the x-axis. So you can make bar charts and pie charts and all, all sorts of different things. But this time, we want a funnel. So if I go over here and I search lead ID, I take it from the leads module, drag it over here. And I'm going to change this. This just changes how it's counting the data. So it could take every lead ID and add them up. We don't want to do that. We want it to have a count of every lead ID individually instead of adding them all up as a sum. So I'm going to set that to count. And now I need potentials. Because remember, we say, show me my leads. Those without any potentials, invoices, paid invoices, closed potentials, just my leads. And now I want to see those that have a potential. Oh, spelled it wrong. There we go. So potential ID. Again, dropping it here 
in the y-axis. And I want this to be a count as well. I don't want it to add up all my potentials. I want it to compare distinct values. And if I go here and say one deals, so now I want this here. So this one I want to not mess with how it's counting it. Again, what do we need next? Anybody? Invoices, remember? Leads, leads with deals associated, one deals, invoices. So I click invoices, and you can see it's just filtering all the columns on the left here, so I don't have to search through a bunch of different pick lists to figure this out. And I'm gonna go invoice ID. Again, it's pulling this from books. So you see me pulling data from a bunch of different apps to make one single report. And then paid invoice count. All right, so now if I close this and I hit these little three dots, and I say show me all the involved columns. These are all the columns and data sources we're pulling from, right? So we have the lead ID, the potential ID, the one deals count, the invoice, and the paid invoices count. If I hit click here to generate graph, it's gonna make this little pie chart, which is not really what we want, right? We want something like a funnel. So you see there are a bunch of different kinds I can do. I can do ring ID, I can do semi-pie. I'm going to do a funnel. And close this. I actually want to change these as well. So I have a sum here. Remember, I want distinct counts here because I want to compare them against each other. So I believe it's gonna be count, count, that makes sense. Count, count, actual count, actual count, actual, so that should be good. Switch it back to the funnel. And there you go. So right away I have this pretty, pretty convenient chart, right? So we can see here, if I zoom in a little bit, 38% of my leads are just existing in my CRM. They have no invoices, they have no potentials related to them, nothing. 35% of the leads in my account have a potential associated with them. 13.9 have a one deal associated with them, but they haven't been invoiced yet. Below that, 1,000, 10%, have an invoice, but they've not paid yet. And then, zooming out, 2.6% have paid. So right away you can see where the bottlenecks in your funnel are and you can see where you might want to refine this. So you're seeing that even though 10% have an invoice, only 2.6% have paid. So that might be something you want to follow up on, right? So you see how I can take data from all these different sources and really quickly make a pretty cool chart. I could also take it back to the pie chart mode if I want. And you can filter it down. So I could filter it down only by specific companies. So show me a lead, all of my leads within a specific company that have deals associated. And you can do all sorts of cool stuff here. So this is the present of what building reports looks like. It's very fast, it's cool, it blends data, but where does this sort of thing go into the future? Do we have any guesses? Is it just more optimization? It's pretty optimized already, right? You can make it right away. Is it just a new UI? Asking Zia, right? Being able to get an analytics platform and combining it with artificial intelligence is how this is supposed to go. Typically, whenever you're using software, you have to adapt to the software, right? You have to mold yourself and learn how the software wants you to interact with it. Going forward, AI is gonna allow us to do a bit of the opposite. And it's kind of the end goal of making software the ultimate usable thing. It's just simply asking and interfacing with the software like you would any other human. So say you're in you know, a meeting with a colleague, a boss, whatever the case is, and you're just wondering, you know, I wish I could figure out X, Y, and Z about our business. Being able to just ask that of analytics using Zia is how things will move forward in the future, and this is gonna to continue to get more and more refined. So I want to show you that now. So here you see, I'm in the Ask Zia little module here, and we have a bunch of recent questions, but I want to ask, um, uh, say like what's the sales in each region. So right away it's automatically built a report. You can see it actually pulled some keywords here. So if I mouse over this little dot, 
in the country, United States, the total amount is above 9 million, almost 10 million. So just like that, right? I didn't even have to use a drag and drop interface, which while easy and you can learn it, I didn't even have to learn anything here, right? I'm just asking a question very naturally in the way that you might want to ask a question of say, an analyst that in the past, you would have to ask that question to the analyst and then they would have to go and build this report. In the past pass, they would have to spend a whole weekend, they would have to query tables, you have to pull up a bunch of data. Now I can just ask this of Zia and it's made right away super quickly for me. I can even specify and say show it to me as a bar chart. And now Zia did that for me, right? United States again, nine million. And I could also break it down Let's say, show me region, uh, let's say by lead source. So now we're looking at it by lead source and you can see we're still looking at nine million total, but it's broken down by every distinct lead source. So whether we're getting leads from a partner, an external referral, a cold call, we're seeing all of that right there. And we can still see the total by looking at the outer ring. Okay, back here. All right, so that's cool, but that's all pulling from just a single data source, right? That was all just pulling information from CRM. Zia can also mix data sources. So I could go, show me the funnel on leads count. And you can see it's pulling up little contextual fields right there, right? Converted leads and deals generated along with. So you see I'm now building in a bunch of different data sources here. Show me the funnel, so I'm telling it a type of chart. It's recognizing that, leads count, converted leads and deals generated along with, so it's recognizing that I want an addition with just natural language. <coughs> invoices, so now I'm dipping into a, to a totally different data pool typically. Along with invoices, count and paid invoices, and I'm asking it to generate that for me. And so here's that funnel I just made. This guy loves it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's legitimately kind of a cool thing. Like, I've asked this before, who here likes building reports? Not this way, drag and drop building reports. Wow, incredible. No one. Building reports isn't necessarily a fun thing. It's, it's important and a business should do it to get insights and figure out how they might want to adjust what they're doing. But no one like spends a weekend just building reports with the bros, right? No one likes to look forward to going to work, rolling in. Let's figure out how I'm supposed to stack these columns, sums, actuals, counts, so that we can then get something that's coherent to us. It's not something innate. This is something much more innate, much more clear. And not only that, it can learn over time, right? So this is not the old way of doing things. This is the way we'll do things in the future and going forward, I mean, I think this is something we can all agree is much easier to do, more natural, and feels better overall than the report building, which is, while well, cool, convenient, and allows you to do the same stuff, this is much, much easier, much more natural. So one last one, what if I asked it to show me the deals count? Invoices count and number of tickets. So now we have three distinct data sources, right? Number of tickets uh, by account. So now I'm saying, show me the deals count, that's CRM. Invoices count, that's books, that's sales and finance data, data that you typically can't mesh together unless you have two separate vendors that are not built to work with each other. But with Zoho you can and number of tickets by account. Number of tickets, now we're dipping into support. So we have sales, finance, and support all in one chart that we're asking analytics to build for us. There we go. Just like that, pretty fast, super easy. So now we can see, all right, potentials, invoices, and support tickets for this company. Let me zoom in. Adaptus, and you can still do all the stuff you can do by drag and dropping by turning off certain fields, turning them on. And Zia, in this case, it doesn't have a lot of ways to break down this information, but if you ask it something and it's not exactly sure what you're asking it, it'll give it a try and break down the data as, in as many ways as it can. In this case, it tries four different ways to say, what are you asking of me? Is this precisely what you want? 
And then you can, you know, tag it and say, this is what I want, and move forward from there, and it'll learn that. So this is pretty cool stuff. Data from three separate sources, all pulled into one chart, without me having to get into any cumbersome interface at all, just asking it simple questions.